All right, so uh, did some more testing and some more research, and I'm pretty much just going to wipe out this whole darn thing for one reason. The input box, you can't do a read-only and input in one input field, obviously. Um, and because of that, oh, this is so annoying. Um, because of that, I actually have to create two elements, one for input and one for output uh, in the game, obviously. So, and this is, this is what I'm talking about. I'll show you guys real quick what I mean, and then we'll move on and get this done. So, I am input from the player. Bam, okay? We can do that all day long. The player can also do this. <laughs> Just wipe everything out uh, for no reason. And I don't really want that because I want it to function <clears throat> really like what a real console or command line would actually do, which is read only uh, in some areas, input in another area, so on and so forth, right? So we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to keep the input field that we have. And first of all, we're going to remove our test on event change. <clears throat> We're going to leave the the uh, on end uh, string command that we the code that we wrote when we click out of this box. Um, we want it to close. Now, <laughs> I, I'm still kind of on the fence on on if I really want to do that or not. I may end up just opting for the close button. Um, I think I'm actually going to get rid of that. Actually, yeah. I really want just the close button to be there. And I need to change this to uh, open close hacker terminal and show, let's see, what is it? Uh, hide hacker terminal. There we go. Um, reason I did, it is, did that is because the um, only downside is it's actually not going to clear the text. But anyway, the reason I did that, if the player for some reason uh, punches their mouse a whole bunch and they're just kind of clicking around trying to make the game go faster or whatever by the way that never works um, I don't want it to just arbitrarily close and clear the screen while they're trying them in the middle of trying to read something or do something <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is get this done do work so we're gonna bring this down all the way down here to roughly right about there right and then we're gonna do another input field which is gonna be a little bit different from the bottom one we'll call this uh, uh, command line input we'll call this command line output and then we'll move this sucker back up here to the top if I can get, oh man, I'm gonna have to timey wimey the crap out of this. There we go. And then move this up above here. Now we have this very pretty uh, line in between our input and output. Not really sure if I like it or not, but we're just gonna go with it for right now. Uh, we do need to change our little thingy down here. Actually, let's see, that's the middle, I believe. So let's do this, take a look at it. Okay. So that's not too bad. Okay. So we need to change our input, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, standard single line. Okay. So there's only there's only gonna be one line of, of uh, code that the player can enter, okay? When they type, bam, it hits enter, right? So uh, right now there's no character limit. I, w I have a feeling that as I develop the game, I will probably change this on a case-by-case -case scenario. Uh, only reason being is that, um, I mean, you want to give players freedom, but you don't want them to essentially 
do nothing forever. They have to do something to continue the game. So I may change that at some point. Um, but I think I'm going to bring this down. Test that, see what it looks like. It's not bad. It's looking pretty good. Actually, let's stay zoomed in over here and just switch monitors. So that's not too bad. Okay. So clicking out of it apparently highlights everything in it. We hit enter, it just highlights. Don't really know if I like that or not. Uh, okay. Go back over to the other monitor. Actually, going to scrunch all this up a little bit here. And we're going to take this, and this. Actually. And command line background. Just move that over just a little bit there. Okay. All right, so let's check our settings here. Let's see. We need this as a read only and multi line. Okay, we need as read only. Don't need anything here. Control. Okay. I don't see any other settings to correct that. All right, I can't click in the top input field. Let me switch monitors again. So I can't click up here, but when I click out of that input box, it highlights it. I don't like that. So let's take a look. Let's do a new UI input field. None. Standard single line. Okay, so nothing is crazy here versus what we have here. All right, let's see what we can do here. Oh, I think I just figured out why. All right, let's take a look at our scripts here. And I think... Yeah, that's why. Um, I need this on start, not fixed update. So what's basically happening is that it's activating the input field every X frames. Um, so hence why when I click out of it, it highlights things. So let's test this again, see what happens. Okay, that works. Okay, so that works. But what I need it to do is on carriage return to clear our input field, our command line input, rather. So, okay. Uh, perfect. So what we're going to essentially do is um, on value change, we're going to look for the carriage return and then dump that variable um, into, or dump that value into a variable and then use it against our output uh, as well. Uh, 
Alrighty. We're getting there, guys. Okay, we're going to go back over to our terminal. Okay. So we're going to say public void. Um, so we need a function to essentially uh, scan all the text, get the input, and then look for a carriage return. So, okay, we're going to call it um, input commands. And we're going to say um, if regex.match. Uh, let's see, which one is it? Okay. <clears throat> if regex is match, um, input is going to be. Uh, command line dot text and then the pattern we're looking for is carriage return and what we want it to do is work alright let's test this and make sure that it works and actually let's go ahead and do something else real quick here so we actually need a command line and then output uh, box. So that's for the output up here. And we'll go to terminal controller where our script is. Come on. Okay. And then we're going to say um, uh, output.txt equals to um, command line dot text and then we can clear the command line dot text equals blank blank equals nothing yeah okay let's try that the logic is undeniable that's why it's gonna fail all right yes Facebook is blowing up sorry all right we're going to say uh, this is a test command entry. Enter. Not a darn thing happened. Because it is single line. Okay, let's take a look and see what we get. Debug.log. Uh, what am I looking for? Command line. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. What did I forget, kids? Right here. Mrah. On value change. Get rid of that. Terminal controller. Hacker terminal controller. Input commands. Play. This is a test command. So, um, you can see in the in the in the console there that when I hit enter, that oh, the focus goes away. We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. Okay. So we actually need to change this. We need to, to remove it from here and put it down here. Um, for commands. We're actually going to change the code a little bit because it's not going to have a carriage return. So let's let's look for the word command. Spelled correctly. <clears throat> Let's test it. So essentially, if I understand this correctly, is when I hit enter, it goes to a, it loses focus. Um, this is a test command. Look at that! Look at that! 
That is beautiful. That is freaking beautiful. Now, what we needed to do also after we get done, we needed to clear the text and put the cursor back in that uh, input field. So, we're going to go borrow some code. Uh, activate input field. So, we're going to say uh, command line dot active what is it I uh, just had it pasted there activate input field yep that's correct that's correct excellent all right so essentially what this is going to do is just put the cursor right back in the input field and I'll actually put it over here so you can see it a little bit better uh, and you won't be diluted by console output starting the game command line this is a test command Perfect. Command. Oh, okay. So we have a problem. No, not not necessarily a problem. Unexpected output. Problem is, is if the whole game would crash. So unexpected output is fine. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna change our code to where it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, we're we're actually looking at this line right here. We don't want to rewrite the text altogether. Uh, so let's try. I don't know if Unity will let me do that or not. Okay, no errors. Let's see what happens. Okay, go back over to the game. This is a test command. Okay. Command. Booyah. Okay, so we're on a good start here. We're on a really good start. Alrighty, we're almost there, guys. Almost there. All right, so what we need is carriage return plus whatever the new command line text is. Okay. We're actually going to call this input text. Uh, change this. It's a, it's a little more uh, fitting. Okay. game right here command no reference exception oh right because I changed the <laughs> yeah thank you unity for making me hate my life hang on guys okay try it again so uh, note when you change a variable uh, a public variable's name it will in the editor it will blank out the value for that variable so command this is a test command so every time we type the word command it will uh, essentially do what we needed to do now how can we possibly do multiple inputs? Super easy. Uh, we're going to do regex and switch case, sort of. So, uh, look, let me go back over here. All right, so we know that. Actually, let's get rid of some of these debugs and save some processing power here. All right, so we know that this works, and what we need it to do. Um, we can do a switch case and look for um, I'm trying to think here we can look for uh, specific words in the uh, box in the input and I don't know if we can do a regex switch case all in one I don't think that we can to the documentation let's find out so what we want is uh, Unity, let's see, C sharp regex. Okay. Regex and switch case. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see.
Okay, so that's kind of what I thought. So what we're what I was thinking is not going to work. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we could do multiple if statements. Um. Hmm. I'm thinking on if there's another way to evaluate. Evaluate this. So we can get this. We can assign it to a variable. Now, regex would be the easiest way because the re the reason I keep coming back to regular expressions is because that um, the player could be typing in anything. They don't have to type just one word. They can literally type, um, "Please shut down this console," and we need it to find the word "shut down" and close out the terminal. Now that is not normal. Um, what am I looking for? That's not normal command line design, obviously. So. We could force normal command line design, which would make this hellaciously easier. Okay, let's do this the normal command line way. Uh, normal command line does not do regular expression search. Command lines are very stupid sometimes. <clears throat> um, they definitely don't have a regular expression search. So we're just going to do normal. Uh, should just do a case. I'm thinking. Yeah, this will work. All right. So what we need is first to assign the input text that the player types in to an actual variable and then use that in our switch case. So we may use it in multiple places. So let's go ahead and do a private string uh, input text var. Okay. Put This is going to be our test. Put a text bar. Okay. So then we're going to use what is it? Uh, switch in case. All right. Wait. I'm doing that wrong. Hang on. Documentation. Sorry, I've, I have literally the worst memory in the world. Okay. All right, so input text var right there. And we're going to say case. Um, the first one is going to be our, our uh, help. The player needs help. So we're going to do um, slash, let's just do question mark. Okay, I had to check something to see if it would actually work the way that I remember. So you can do this, case uh, help, case, ah, 
slash question mark. Okay, so if anybody remembers the old days, ye old days. And then we're gonna do something called, uh, basically what we were doing before. Um, in this case, we're gonna be, um, we, we, we know what the input is gonna be. So we can predict what the output is gonna be. So it's gonna be output.text plus equals. We're gonna do a new line with whatever they send and then or whatever was there before plus and this is where it's going to get a little little crazy especially for a help um, press uh, help. thinking can't think and type of me anymore okay all right let's call that okay so essentially <clears throat> what it's gonna do oh sorry input text uh, dot text equals blank and then we need to set our active input field again <clears throat> Okay, so all we're doing here is just um, setting the output. Uh, we know that um, actually for help we want to do some some separation there. Okay, and we'll give it a test. I'll switch you guys over to the new monitor. And play the game. All right. So when we do this, exactly what we wanted, other than the line break is odd. Type help. It all works, right? Cool stuff. So we can make a few others real quick. Uh, we're gonna do. Um, Case we're going to say uh, exit. Oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, we're just adding this part right here. All right, we're just going to do uh, closure stuff on it. <clears throat> so quit uh, case. EX. Now, I will say this. Uh, I'm a network engineer on my day job. If I could program something similar to the Cisco iOS, that'd be freaking amazing. Um, I, I will probably try to make something a little bit better than what we're showing here um, later on for the actual game for Desolate Star. But for now, this is more proof of concept that we can do it. So that's pretty much what I'm going with. And in case uh, Q. If there's anybody, any Cisco guys or Juniper guys out there, you already know what this is all about. So, and now we need to uh, let's do output box text. And plus hi. Clear. Probably put that in a function, shouldn't I? <clears throat> Void clear input.
Clean code. All right, so uh, we're quitting, and then we need to actually uh, essentially hide and disable the whole shebang. So we need to do uh, another public here. Public canvas group. group. Sorry, I re rearranged my desk and now nothing feels right. Okay, terminal controller. Yeah. And we'll do another. I know that we have this on another uh, script. You can just as easily call that other script and make that a public static variable and do your whole nine yards. I really just, I'm tired and I don't really feel like going through all of that crap. So what we're gonna do, is gonna say uh, get components, So that will basically turn it off and make it where you can click through the canvas, do anything that you need to do, and that's going to fire um, when we exit via our input down here. And let's go ahead and test this out, make sure there's no errors. There is unexpected break. Oh, semicolons, kill you every time. Okay, much better. All right, play, switch monitors. Uh, let's see, help. Okay, we fixed all that. That looks good. Look at that. Now, let's do our baseline test. That still works. That still works. A blinky still happens. Close still happens. Journal. That still works. Yep, hacker terminal. Look at that. Look at that. See, it's all there. So we need to actually clear that because we're essentially going out of the uh, terminal itself. Shutting it down and all that jazz. So we need to do a clear output also. So let's do that. Void clear output. We'll do the output box.txt equals. All right, and then we can just call this function whenever we need it. And we'll clear it after uh, after we close the terminal, after the canvas is switched off, uh, just in case there's any kind of processing lag or whatever and it fires the clear output before it closes it. It might look a little weird. Um, that's theoretical, I know, but it is what it is, right? All right, we got a debug running around here, open somewhere. There it is. Sorry. I want to make sure it didn't fire off my console continuously forever and ever. Okay, here we go. This will probably be our last test for tonight. All right, help. Question mark. Slash question mark. 
exit. Go back into our hack terminal. Seems to work pretty good. Quit works. Interesting. Oh, uh, we don't have a default command. Um, that is my bad. So in a switch case, <clears throat> if you don't have a default, it doesn't know what to do. Okay. So at the very bottom here, we're going to do case default break. And we're going to say output box.text plus equals line plus um, what did I say? Okay. Add command or file name. <laughs> uh, every DOS user of old is screaming at me saying, why, 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 why resurrect that horrible command line return? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so clear input. There we go. Maybe Unity does not understand what case default is. Interesting. Uh, we'll have to look at the equivalent to that real quick. Oh, it's just default, not case default. Wrong language. Ah. Hey, no errors. All right, last test, I promise. I'll get you guys out of here. All right. This is the test. Back commander file name. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay, I want to make one alteration that it actually sends uh, the command that the player uh, typed in plus that. Uh, so we're going to say uh, plus input input text uh, text plus new line plus bad commander file name. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'll probably make some more alterations to clean this up a little bit. Um, I do believe that I like the command line this command line style more than the others um, just to kind of give a real quick recap on what I've got so far so the control terminal again is just going to access um, elements or I'm sorry game objects that are in the scene and do something with those objects in this case it's just the lights that are in this room in this scene it just turns them off or on it's just a toggle all right which we can do that with the command line uh, the command line mechanic that we just built. Uh, we can do that there. Um, essentially, it's go out and find all of the game objects with the tag whatever, or look for game objects with the name something in them. Turn them on, turn them off, whatever. Um, info terminal was the second thing we did. All it is is just a, um, a terminal... Um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? it's just an informational terminal you, you you open it and it has something there you look at it and you okay oh you say okay i've got that information like like a tutorial bubble in some games you know pop up and tell you to do things or no no stuff uh good for something like that and we've got our journal terminal uh which i didn't really like building this because i didn't like how uh the flow of the commands and everything went i think i, I like the command line a little bit better um, which we can control that a little bit better also a um, little more text uh, but anyway uh, this mechanic was basically you click on the button it tells you what the journal entry was for that date you go back and go to the next date which we don't have anything set up for those and then you can close it and then last but not least our hacker terminal that we spent way too much time making because I'm just tired it's 430 in the morning leave me alone I uh, still got to work on closing the terminal and reacquiring. 
Why did it go to back commander file menu order? Interesting bug. I will work on that after the video though. Uh, but anyway, the hacker terminal is what we've got here. Um, that's pretty much it right there. So my idea with this is to have uh, when you when you get into the terminal the first time, it's going to spit out some output and say, you know, thank you for logging in, blah blah blah, like a like a normal router would. Um, for those that are familiar with it, um, I have a menu option that the player can go back and forth to. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out some sort of scroll mechanic in here, and the out apparently is kind of buggy on the way we have our code too. Um, and now it's completely broken for some reason. So we got some bugs to work out and once I get them all done I'll make a separate video just for this and show which uh, what I've done with it, where I've gone with it, how I have uh, completed all this, and how I feel about it, so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop this for tonight. I've got a lot of editing to do, and this is probably going to be like two and a half hours long, so I apologize. Uh, but anyway, this is Nick with ZeroTechnologies.net LLC uh, for the Desolate Star uh, game project. And once I get all this cleaned up and ready to go, there will be another video coming, hopefully this week.